everyone. Welcome for Perspectives for Parenting. We are so glad that you're here joining us today. And today we have our guest, Laura. Laura, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. You have two kids. Uh, you're an educator. You live in LO. And as a self-professed extrovert, how have you and your family been um, keeping busy? Or what have you guys been doing during this yeah. pandemic? Thanks for having me. I'm happy to share some of my experiences with you all. Um, I Every summer, my family um, always comes up with a bucket list, a summer bucket list. And usually it involves a bunch of adventures that we can go on or places we get, like to go to. For example, my kids love Oaks Park. They love Enchanted Forest. And um, that obviously is not a non-starter for this summer. So we had to get pretty creative with just what we could do that was safe and socially distant um, and still be active and take advantage of Oregon beautiful summers and be outside. So we kind of broke the list into things we could do at home and things we could do away from home. Um, so I'll share, I guess, a, a few of the ideas of the things that they like. Um, we've done um, a lot of slip and slide time. I highly recommend buying one. They're like $20 or something at Walgreens and it's lasted us throughout the summer, especially now that it's gotten hot. So it's been good to have. Um, my kids, by the way, I didn't say before, but my kids are a seven and 11. So that might give you some parameter about what they can do or what stage they're at. Um, we also, they like making movies, so on iMovie on our iPad, um, they come up with like, they each get to play like characters and do character voices and scripts and, you know, they come up with <laughs> kind of painful scenarios <laughs> that are long and <laughs> lots of dialogue, but, um, but they have fun with it. Um, we've done a ton of baking, which has not been good for my waistline, but um, <laughs> we've had a lot of fun in the kitchen. Um, and what else? Uh, random act of kindness was actually really fun. We decided to um, surprise our neighbors. Our hydrangea bush in the front of our house was blooming like crazy. And so they went out and picked some flowers and then wrote a card to one of our neighbors. And we just randomly, like they loved that they like ran over and like rang the doorbell and left it. And, oh. it away. and our neighbors figured out that it was us, but it was so fun to like, you know, see them excited and mm -hmm. joy to others. So um, those are some things for home. And then um, some away from home things that they've enjoyed is um, geocaching, which is kind of like treasure hunting. Yeah. Um, you can find the geocache app and then there's different places around Lake Oswego or wherever you are, they're all over the world. Um, so we've been enjoying biking because we bike so much yeah. these days that we that gives us a purpose in our biking is we'll say let's go find the next geocache. Um, we went to play Frolf, um, which is Frisbee golf, uh, at Blue Lake Regional Park, kind of near Gresham area. And um, that was just great to be outside and you know we just had fun throwing the frisbee around even if they can't throw very far we just teamed up and my husband went with my daughter who can't throw very you know 10 feet <laughs> and, so, and then my son and I were a team and I'm terrible at frisbee so you don't have to be an expert um, and then we went to Sugar Pine Drive-In which is really close by and they have just a drive through you can get a, a really delicious ice cream cone um, and the line isn't actually too bad usually so we did that afterwards and my son will say he's now like a professional berry picker because we have been berry picking a ton um each time that the new seat you know strawberries or blueberries um we love hoffman farms is um great and um just don't bring your own buckets is my biggest advice because they don't allow you to just they have the boxes there so those are just some ideas um i'm happy to share more if you want to hear more <laughs> I do have a question. So you mentioned that you have a bucket list at the beginning of summer. Do you, like, who puts the bucket list together? Well, we sit down together at the beginning and I'm the scribe and then they just throw out ideas and then we have a big, huge butcher sheet of paper that we put in the kitchen where everyone can see it and then a little box next to each thing. And then when we do it, it's kind of like, okay, you've got to check it out, you know, check it off. Or each day I kind of say, okay, what are we going to do from the bucket list? And so I tried to come up with as many, like, you know, things as there were days at least. And so we could at least try to, our goal is to try to do at least one thing per day if possible. 
So it kind of gives us, if we have like nothing to do that day, we'll just look at the chart and then, you know, try to find something to do. I love that. And then it kind of sets what the mood of the day is too. If it's hot and you want to be inside and do something quiet or. Yes. That everybody needs to get out and have a new kind of point of view because they've been in the house so much that they're driving each other crazy. Exactly. That's why it just kind of leaves it open. To, exactly. Like today was super hot. So um, we busted out the slip and slide earlier today or, you know, tomorrow it's going to be even hotter. So maybe we'll go down to the river. But I kind of want to see like, yeah, it's hard to predict sometimes what, what the feeling is. Sometimes the kids are just exhausted and they just want to be home. So we'll do our pajama day or something is another one. Oh, fun. So. I want to be one of your kids. <laughs> We do. I'm trying to make it fun because I'll be honest with you, at the beginning of the summer, it was really daunting. It was really, even for me as like a person who really enjoys planning things, like it was hard to be like, oh, we can't do that. Oh, we can't, you know, plus we had to do everything just as our nuclear family. I'm trying to not do too much with friends, which is what I love to do, but we have, you know, we're trying to be safe. So it was hard like knowing what, how are we going to fill our whole summer, um, you know, that without, because the kids usually go to camps. We usually have several family vacations planned and a lot of it went out the window. And so it was, it was hard. So it kind of gave some um, guidance to how we were going to fill our days and have the kids still get excited about things. Like we'll talk about, oh, tomorrow we should go do, get that geocache that's on Cook's Butte, you know, oh, like something to look forward to. I love the idea because it's not too late to do it because we're going into that last month of summer. So if someone says, oh, wait, I missed it, they still have a month of Definitely. the last four weeks. For sure. Um, Laura has two kids, if you missed it, um, seven and 11 years old. And we we're just wanting to know um, if you could let us know about kind of your new routines. Okay. Well, um, my family, so um, I have a seven-year-old girl and 11-year-old boy, so I, I do have different genders. I think I forgot to mention that before, too. So that's added a little bit of a challenge because they're at different developmental stages and have different desires and needs, um, as do all kids, but they're just a little bit further apart than a lot of families have kids a little closer together. So that's been something diff different to manage more as we're home more <laughs> together and spending time planning activities. Um, they are sleeping in and um, staying up later much more than normal because usually we have summer camps planned um, or family vacation. So usually there's things that we have to get up for. But now these days it's like, well, we don't necessarily need to get up anymore. <laughs> So that's kind of caused me to have to realize that I needed to set up more of a routine for my family um, so that, that we just didn't stay in our pajamas until noon every day. <laughs> Sometimes that does happen, but try, trying to avoid that as much as possible to just feel like we we're actually doing something. Um, so one thing was to set up in the morning. They they're doing some school time because I'm an educator and you know the whole slide summer slide is a real thing and I've been just wanting them to stay up and stay focused and engage their brains and so we do um, some school time in the morning with just a workbook that I got um, from the Lakeshore Learning Store um, for each of them and then they do like 30 to 45 minutes is my goal if for them to do it. One takes a lot longer than the other, I'll tell you that. Um, so it's not always synchronous, but it works. Um, and then we have, we'll get dressed, we'll you know do that, and then we'll go on to our daily activity. So it kind of gives a little parameters to our morning is get kind of what we need to get done in the morning of school. They also play piano, and so we have like a time in the afternoon that they have to practice their piano. And then they do Dear Time, which uh, an educator, it stands for Drop Everything and Read. And so we do Dear Time. My daughter does about 20 minutes and my son does about 30 minutes of Dear Time every day. So it's kind of like quiet time for like, you know, even like toddlers could do that and just sit and look through books, you know, in their room and just look at the pictures. They don't have to be reading the words. So it's just kind of quiet time. So um, having that daily routine has been helpful to not, you know, feeling endless summer, endless days. 
we, um, some of the things that have changed, we ride bikes a lot more than we ever have before. We play a lot more board games. We've definitely like opened up our closet and played a ton more. Some favorites are Ticket to Ride. I highly recommend if you haven't played that. That's for ages like seven to seven and up, you could do. Um, Apples to Apples Junior is another one that they really like. And that one you could do also probably even like five or six, it was just reading age and up, I think. Um, and yeah, so that's been some things that I've done and things that have changed a little bit. We have a lot more time to just entertain ourselves and our family, but I really love that my kids have come together more during, they have time to play together. And so, you know, before we were always going, going, going. And so now they realize they have to get along. So, um, if, if you want, I can tell you kind of a way that I've managed how to get them to get along a little bit better. Does that sound good? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. My friends a couple summers ago alerted me to an app that's called Kids Award and it's with a Z. And um, you just tap like the little chart that comes up and you can create a chart depending on how many squares you want for your each kid or you can do one for together. So um, they have these together points where if they find an activity on like to do together and they do that activity by themselves, I, I can't be involved in that. That's their together time. And they don't fight and they play nicely. At the end of that activity, they get a together point. And then each of them has something that they're working towards, you know, whether it's an, a game they want or a toy or something or an activity they want to go do. So they save up their together points. Um, and then we'll go do that to celebrate when they fill up their charts. Yeah. So it plays a little song each time you press the button. And so when they, when they hear that music, it's like Pavlov's dogs. They're like, do, 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 do. They're like, yes. Like they, <laughs> they hear it. So it's kind of a good, you know, auditory. It's like a little reminder, like you're doing a good thing. Keep it up without me having to like interject and say anything. Cause then sometimes then they'll stop if I say anything, right? It's better to just yeah. be so. That's been one thing that's been helpful. I just ordered, you're gonna laugh, a chore chart to like, I just got it today. And we were working on it together, trying to come up with like four or five things that each of them have to do every day, like feed the dogs that one feeds them in the morning, one feeds them at nighttime. One of them, my son who's older is the one that can walk one of them. And the other one has to throw the ball for like 15 minutes instead for the, for the other one, because I have two dogs. So, you know, setting up some kind of, I was feeling overwhelmed as a mom, just like, cause we're home all the time, the mess, you know, was growing and I was feeling like all I'm doing is picking up, picking up all the time. So I got to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like you guys need to help me. So I, I realized again, like I need a routine for that. I need to set up some system or, you know, so they can be aware, self-aware of like what they need to do to help me instead of me just like yelling at them all day. Yeah. So um, it's it's a way, I'm just going to put it on my refrigerator again, right front center, and then they can check it off once they um, have done it. And then my son is always wanting to now bike bike to plaid pantry is like his, mm-hmm. I don't know. If you have a tween or a teenager, you probably know that this is like a thing to like bike to 7-Eleven or like bike somewhere. So he is wanting to do that and have money. And so I'm like, well, if you do your chores, you'll get your allowance. So he is totally all in now <laughs> for yeah. wanting to get his chores done. And we have a system of money, like, you know, they get a certain amount per day. And then at the end of the week, if they did all their chores then they're going to get a bonus dollar or two, we're still kind of working it out, but we need like, we just needed a system and that's what mm-hmm. I realized. So those were just some, a couple tips. I, I love that. I love how, um, I kept thinking of the Bible verse where in Psalm it says, help us order our days. Um, And so that, I mean, there is a reason why, I mean, biblically it's there because it does help us get through the days and get through Mm -hmm. this strange time, um, having structure. And I love how um, you're able to identify what your child or what your children need to incentivize them. So that's really cool too. Uh, 
Well, that one started pretty young, and this is for something for a, maybe if you have a toddler or, you know, that when I, I did a star chart when they were younger because my daughter was always saying no, no, and so then if she was positively responding, then she would get a star for just being the positive reinforcement, you know, is a big part of education, and it just works with kids. They want, you know, if you pick up and you catch them being good, that's what I, you know, that, that'll reinforce the behavior. So yeah, they know this, they've been doing star charts and then it just kind of just, you know, it just evolved as they got older. Now they don't get stars, you know, they get these together points. Mm -hmm. So you, you can make it work for whatever age. Kids well, and then when you're incentivizing them, then what you're doing is you're another Bible verse that came into mind is from Proverbs where it says a joyful heart is good medicine. Fresh mm -hmm. spirit dries up the bones. And so incentivizing them to be joyful about being responsible and getting activities done, I think is as a parent, um, we're enabling them, equipping them, helping them grow and mature. So thank you, Laura, so much for being with us. Um, it's been my pleasure. It was so great. Uh, and thank you all um, for joining us for Perspectives for Parenting. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.